All right, we're going to hit the home stretch here. I uh, do want to hit a little bit about C turn. Uh, you know, the C turn year for your professional development runs from July 1 to June 30th. Um, we did some virtual trainings over the summer. Um, and we also allowed you to count some virtual trainings over the summer that may have been conducted by organizations other than the Sea Turn organization. Some of you took some extension, some uh, NAAE, some National FFA. Um, I just want to let you know that if you, if you did take part in some of those, it's going to be critically important for you to document uh, the hours that you spent, the date of that workshop, uh, the organizer or conductor or facilitator of that workshop and the topic of that workshop. Uh, make sure you put that in your notebook so that you can document that uh, when we do the reviews uh, come up in April. So make sure you've got all that well documented, um, you know, because that, that's different from what we've done in the past. Um, if you are a brand new teacher, some of those people we introduced at the beginning, uh, you're going to need to get with your CTA director at your school. They will enter you into the CTERN system. Uh, the CTERN system, once you get a login and a password, that's where you will go to register for your professional development courses that has an agriculture catalog and you can look at all the agriculture classes and that's where you can get that uh, standard number 10 met. All right, if you've got any questions about CTERN or uh, We'll be glad to help you at our office, uh, or Martin Bias is now our c turn coordinator for the entire state, so he's taken over that role. <clears throat> so let us know if we can help you there. Uh, Mr. Lastly sent me some slides for some FFA updates. Uh, he says that the 2021 rosters are now available through the George FFA website. Last year's rosters have been expired. Uh, you should go to your account settings and declare the courses that you plan on teaching for this 2021 school year, you have to declare those courses on your settings uh, in your profile before your students can select those courses as the ones that they are enrolled in. Uh, the profiles, the student profiles must be updated to include the courses that they're enrolled in, uh, their SAE and their personal information for 2021. The affiliation fee for middle school chapters is $900 again this year. The affiliation fee for high schools is going to be $9.05 per member again this year. Uh, the affiliation fee payments and enrollment declaration are due no later than October 15th. Um, the invoices for the middle school flat fee will be posted by September 1st. So hopefully uh, on September 1st, you will have an invoice that you can then get to your school bookkeeper. Hopefully that will be time to get uh, that check posted by them. The fall invoices for the high school chapters will be posted after your enrollment declaration is completed. So, like I said earlier, when you go on there and get all your enrollment done, the sooner you get that done and hit that declaration button, then they'll get your invoice posted at that time and that will give you longer or shorter time to get the check cut by your school bookkeeper. So the earlier you get in and do that enrollment, hit declare, I'm done, then they'll get your dues posted for that semester. All right. Um, we are going to do the, uh, right now, the plan is to do the award guideline revision for 21-24. Uh, you know, we, we always do that every three years. Uh, we divide, we uh, select teachers or ask teachers to serve on different committees. They review the guidelines of every CDE. We are beginning that process now. So if um, you are contacted about serving on a committee, we will then post who those committee members are in September. And then if you have things that you think you would like to see um, revised, improved, uh, changed about a particular CDE, you can contact your area representative that's serving on that particular committee and let them know of your um, wishes and your ideas, and they can take that to their committee meetings. Um, event registration will continue to be through the Georgia Ag Ed website. You've got to hit submit to complete your registration. Uh, this year, there is a page that you can go on to see what you have registered for. Um, I do know that, you know, we tend to 
in the past, we've always had a team, maybe on average one team at a, each event that shows up that was not registered and nobody saw coming and we don't have a pack of Scantrons made for them, so forth and so on. Uh, I do think that nine times out of 10, that team that showed up, the advisor was pretty sure they registered. Um, they didn't just come intentionally uh, to kind of crash the party. Uh, nine, it's mostly because they forgot to hit submit at the end. So please make sure you do that. But the easy thing this year will be that if you can't remember whether you've registered for that event or not, um, you can have an easy button to click on and it'll show you what you've registered for so you don't have to wonder. That's been a little harder to do in the past, okay? All right, national convention, of course. We've all uh, understand now that there will be no national convention in person. It will be virtual. The details are on the FFA.org page. There is going to be a chapter registration fee and it will be based on the number of devices that you want to be able to log into and watch the convention. So you can get that information off the FFA website. Our foundation, wanted to include a slide or two about our foundation. Most of y'all know our foundation, Ms. Katrina Jones in the middle. Uh, Ashton Levitt on the left is the event coordinator. Ms. Hillary Culpepper is the assistant director. They do a great job of, uh, of finding fund sources to make sure that every FFA event that we conduct is sponsored, um, awards are sponsored, the students get um, trips to national convention to represent the state of Georgia. Sometimes the advisors have an award that's also sponsored. Um, I just wanna let you know about that foundation because they're always in search of new contacts. If you've got a, uh, a company uh, organization in your local community that you think would be interested in in maybe becoming a sponsor of an award area or a particular CDE, uh, please don't let that, uh, you know, kind of think that that's not too big a deal. That is a big deal and the foundation would love to hear from you and they'll make that contact and, and see if we can maybe get a new sponsor on board. One of the things they will be doing in September uh, September the 11th is hosting a sporting clays tournament. That's always a pretty popular activity. Most of you might have people in your community that are kind of into that. Hope you'll uh, go on the foundation website and maybe download this information and forward that to people that you think might be interested. Always been a good fundraiser. Personally, um, if you would like to give to the foundation um, in other than maybe a once a year gift when you go to GBATA convention and that's a one-time shot. Uh, maybe a little harder to uh, turn loose of a big chunk of money at one time. They've got a campaign going now where you can uh, do a monthly thing where you can give a smaller amount each month and make it a little easier to give. So we appreciate those that give to the foundation at the GBATA conference, but we also appreciate those that might want to choose this particular format um, and make that a little easier. So we'll stop here. I'd like to call <clears throat> on Marcus to see if he would like to take a minute to give us a GBATA update. Uh, let us know anything that we need to know from the PRC. Well, Dr. Katrina Pollard is now the Area 2 rep, so I'll let her uh, take it away. All right. All right. Katrina? Um Yes, you, you, get, um, you get the slide from Justin? No. Okay. Um, I have no slides. This okay. is my GBATA. All right, so. I've been in Atlanta all day today, so I don't know when he sent them. The other day. So, okay, no problem. So, um, first, if you got an email from me saying that you haven't paid your dues yet, make sure that you go into RegPAC and take care of that. Um, or you can send a check. The address is on the GVATA link. Also, um, if you haven't paid your PRC dues, remember, like I know we're, you know, beating a dead horse, but this is how we ensure that we get our extended day, extended year. That $150 goes a really long way. Our new area two PRC rep is Cecily Gunner. And so she will be doing a lot with that. Um, we've also started doing uh, shade tree sessions. And the first one is going to be on the 27th. 
You do not have to pre-register. It'll be the same link that we used for summer conference. We'll be using that same Zoom link every month. And so it'll be just a brief uh, professional development once a month about different topics. This um, month's um, topic is going to be about AET and how to um, use it to the best of your ability. I'm trying to find the slide from Justin. So, um, let's see. We've got you access to share your screen, Katrina, if you get, if you've got those slides. Yes, I'm trying to pull it up right now. So, give me one second. It's raining pretty hard here, so our computers are running slow. All right. All right. All right, guys. I love technology. All right, so you should be able to see it now. Um, everybody can see it? Yep, okay. I can see it. Um, so again, these sessions are going to be monthly. We're trying to get them on the exact same day each month, but depending on our speakers, that may change. Um, and then, of course, this doesn't pertain to you guys because area one and four will be doing elect, uh, elections. And make sure you get your money turned in. And you can check if you don't know, check your junk mail to see if you got an email from me. Um, and I'll be emailing you monthly if you don't pay. And that's all I have, Stan. Okay. Cicely, do you have anything that you'd like to add about PRC? Uh, no, sir, just uh, to stress the importance of getting PRC paid if you haven't paid it. All right. Thank you very much. And y'all know if you've been to a couple of these meetings, you know I'm never going to pass up the opportunity to plug PRC. Um, you know, that goes a long way back. I happened to be a new teacher when we began the whole PRC effort um, as a result of this famous thing that if you're around a long time, you'll hear it referred to as the audit. And we came very close to losing all of our funding for extended day and extended year. And uh, that's when we changed the way that we funded extended day, extended year. And we also implemented our program and work standards so that we could police our own organization and uh, set our own set of standards for what we expect. Um, part of that was that we hired a PRC representative that has kind of been our watchdog at the legislative sessions uh, for the last 24 years, I guess, 24, 25 years. Uh, during those times, um, we have, just like this year, uh, we've done incredibly well in, uh, when compared to some other organizations. Um, $150 a year to be able to maintain that presence in the legislature is a penance uh, for what we get out of it. Um, so I would strongly encourage you to make that contribution if you haven't already. Um, and, and be a part of the professional organization and the professional representation that, that has kept our organization strong. I don't know if you look around, but uh, I do know this. When I started in this career in 1994, every CTAE, we were vocational teachers back then, every one of us was on extended day, extended year. Um, if you look up and down your hall now, you'll probably notice that uh, you may very well be the only one in your entire building that's on extended day, extended year. Um, and so that is directly attributable to the fact that we have had that representation. So I, I hope you'll listen to Cecily. I hope you'll make your contribution and uh, be a part because we are all certainly benefiting from it. So I think it's important that we all contribute. Okay. Um, last thing. Uh, this is going to get messy. Uh, it's already messy. It might get worse. Um, I just want y'all to know that uh, in the North Region office, we are, we feel like we're doing everything we can do to try to roll with the punches, uh, try to be flexible, try to, try to react, try to fix every problem that has come along, try to find a solution to every different method of teaching school that's out there, try to make sure that we are going to be able to 
offer this opportunity to every student. Um, I know you're doing the same. I just want you to know that uh, I feel your pain, um, that uh, this is something that we are truly all in together and we will uh, prevail and this will all be over at some point in time and we'll look back and you'll look back and uh, those of you that are in your first year teaching, I can't imagine what it's like for this to be my first year teaching. That was a, that was a hair raising experience without the COVID virus. Um, I feel for you, but uh, you will sure have some good stories when uh, you've been doing this 25 years and you're talking to other new teachers uh, who might be having a tough time and you can say, let me tell you about my first year. So um, I hope what doesn't kill us makes us all stronger. Um, that being said, um, we'll get through it and uh, there'll be some brighter days and we can all kind of look back, hopefully, uh, with a little sense of humor about what a mess this was. So I want to thank you for all you do. Uh, God bless you and your families. I hope you'll stay safe. I hope you'll wear a mask. Um, and I hope we uh, all get to see each other in person real soon. So with that being said, I'll dismiss everyone at this time. I'll hang around here for a little while if you want to stay uh, and wait till everybody else checks out and ask some questions on your own. Uh, I'll be glad to hang around. So God bless you. Best of luck.